From the PEN studios, this is the Imperfect Moms Club with your hosts, Lisa and Brittany. In today's special episode of Imperfect, we talk to licensed therapist and author, Elena Lesser-Brunn. Elena discusses early detection of child behavioral issues, helping kids cope with the pandemic, and she introduces us to her book Helping Families with Vaccinations. All this and more on today's episode of the Imperfect Moms Club. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're really excited to have you. I wanted to talk first about postpartum depression um, because I it's something that affected me greatly. And so um, I wanted to kind of not just, you know, Brittany and I have talked about it from personal experience, but I wanted to talk to um, you, especially from, you know, your experiences, you know, with clients and, and um, plus in your own life, if you also struggled with it, you know, I, just I did. To I definitely yeah. did. I've had every symptom in the book. That's why <laughs> this is so easy for me. <laughs> there are three main components of it. Um, and I will tell you about myself and feel free to follow up with questions about me or clients I've seen, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there's a hormonal shift that makes many of us just subject to it from a physiological point of view. Mm -hmm. Our, our chem body chemistry changes pretty radically with the birth of a baby, first gearing up to be pregnant and then having the baby uh, be separated. So that's a, I'm not an expert on, on that. You have to have a gynecologist on uh. or an obstetrician. Um, but then there's a psychological aspect um, in that, at least in our society, there's a sudden sense of overwhelming responsibility for a new life. Yeah. And um, the pressures are mostly on women still. It's amazing. It may be a silent pressure, but it's there. And most of us feel it. And the only women who escape it are those who had parents who they could just blindly follow. Uh, good, very good parent, uh, good parenting themselves so that they're not questioning what they're doing every minute. And their mothers are around and alive and telling them they're doing a great job. And when they can't handle it, the mother comes in, grandmother comes in and takes over and things will go more smoothly. Doesn't mean you won't be depressed, but it probably won't be as bad. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> there's that. And then there's the social societal expectations that dump a whole other set of um, requirements of us. Not only do we have to be nice, good, loving mothers, our kids have to be extremely successful. Mm -hmm. And we have to juggle both work now because we fought for the opportunity and uh, and parenting. And I have clients. I had one this morning on a Sunday who was very upset because although she is extremely accomplished, that's her problem. She has two young kids, eight and three, I think their, their ages are. And if she had if she could really control things, she would quit her very high powered job in city government to be with her kids for a couple of years now. That's what she really wants, but she can't get out of the job market. Um, and she works on women's issues in city government. So she's doing very important work, but she showed me her calendar online and it was filled, you know, every 15 minutes. And she had one hour with nothing in it for the whole day. And I, I said, well, what do you do in that hour? Why aren't you busy? Because a lot of what I do is fun sarcasm and she <laughs> understands it. And she said, well, that's when I do my eight hour job in that one hour. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> and she has, she carries on anyway, but she freaks out, I'm doing that in quotes, at times because it just becomes too much. Um, I could go into way more about her and she gave me permission to talk, 
because she's so such a classic, not necessarily for postpartum, but for an overwhelmed mother. And she, I didn't know her then, but she said she had a terrible case of postpartum depression, uh -huh. psychologically. Um, so, um, I don't know if you're aware of how it used to be in the Middle Ages, but that's okay, because I'll tell you. <laughs> I wasn't there. But <laughs> kids, kids didn't belong to their nuclear family the way they do now, where all the responsibility is usually on the mother. Sometimes there are fathers who are expected to do things too. Uh, but kids belonged to the village and they would just wander around. In, this is in Europe. Um, and if something went wrong, another parent would, you know, deal with it. Mm -hmm. we, we just don't have that. Except I could tell you a very strange experience I had mm -hmm. when my now 50 year old son was a baby in the postpartum situation. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who had a, a baby herself, a neighbor and friend, uh, watch my son for a couple of hours. I don't remember where what I was doing or where I was going. It was 50 years ago. When I came back, she told me she had nursed my baby. Oh, someone did that to me when I was a baby. Did you have that? <laughs> So my mom came back and got me, she dropped me off at a church nursery and yes. after her service, she came and got me and she's like, oh, you know, I just, she was hungry. So I nursed her. Yeah, exactly. Mom. Oh, okay. Hungry. And we were both <laughs> yeah, nursing mothers. Isn't that, it, it blew me. I wasn't angry. I wish she could have told me, but there were no cell phones. She could yeah. have called me, but she couldn't. Um, and now I think, oh yes, that's the way it used to be. And um, I gather in Japan, they give babies over to grandmothers and the grandmothers are still sometimes young enough to have milk and nurse the wow. baby. I mean, yeah. it, it's just the pressure, the pressure is spread out to care for this new life. And we, yeah. we just don't have it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now I'm going to tell you something else that you might not have thought of. And even if you saw a therapist about it, it might not have come up. But I had an experience where, when I was working in a clinic, a psychiatrist came in who had just had a baby and she was wonderful, but she was very, very upset. She didn't have her baby with her. And she was working that day and she said, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. And she was walking around where the secretaries all were and there were therapists off duty. So there was a little group of three or four of us. And she said, I just, I can't stand it. And we said, what's the matter? And she said, well, I keep feeling like I'm gonna drop my baby. Pick her up. So, so I don't pick her up. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I realized with, a, along with doing some reading and we were all discussing it, there was a sense in which she wanted to drop her baby too. Mm -hmm. She was angry at the predicament that she was in as a new mother with all that weight on her shoulders. She was in charge of the clinic. It was too much. And the idea that it's okay for you to even be angry that you have to be a new mother, whether you wanted it or didn't want it, accident, not accident, just suddenly be, being thrown into this impossible role. I really mm -hmm. think it is not possible to do it perfectly, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a balancing act because I'm a working mom. And I remember when I first got pregnant I was the director of a preschool and I think I was teaching kindergarten at the same time and teaching a preschool class and they're like okay well we'd like you to do all three and I'm like well listen I'm gonna be going to part-time here <laughs> you can pick two things and it was a really 
hard year and I was only doing two things and I was part-time, but I had a new baby, you know, and I struggled with the postpartum depression and like intrusive thoughts. I'm like, what, where did this even come from? Yes. Mm-hmm. Like it would freak me out. I thought it was crazy. Yep. So it was, I did not give a hundred percent in all of the areas. Like I yeah. couldn't, it was impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually, so I never, um, you know, when I, towards the end of my first pregnancy, I have two daughters now, but um, my oldest is two. And so towards the end of that, I actually quit my job. So I wanted to stay at home. And so I don't even have, I didn't have a, a job on top of being a mom, but just, I mean, going from not having all those responsibilities of motherhood to all of a sudden, I just, so for me, the, the depression really started with anger. Like I just felt this okay. anger all the time. Like most of the time I was so mad and I was I mad at my baby. That. And I, I just, I remember, you know, and I knew the worst part was that I knew it was irrational. Like I knew that it was because of, you know, I just, but I couldn't help it, which, you know, made me feel like I was crazy. Cause I was like, Lisa, why can't you just get out of this? You know, this is irrational, but I just, you know, Right. And so I would look at my baby who was screaming her head off because she's hungry. And I couldn't look at it through the lens of she's a newborn and that's how she communicates. I was looking at it through my lens. And so I was like, how can you, I don't understand why you can't just wait or just see that mommy is getting your bottle yeah. or like, just wait two minutes. Like, you know, newborn doesn't know that, right. They're just hungry and they're crying, but I was so mad because she just wouldn't, you know, and it, it was just, you know, and then. I was, you know, it was rage, rage, anger. I mean, anger's always been an easier emotion for me than, you know, feeling sad or or anything. Mm -hmm. So everything comes out as anger first. And then, um, you know, and then eventually it got to a point where I just, I just didn't feel anything one day. And then I just continued feeling nothing. And then I, you know, I was like, okay, maybe this is just what motherhood is. This is what I wanted. I'm just going to feel like I started feeling all my emotions were muted. Like I wasn't, I couldn't even feel like I didn't feel happy. I didn't feel all those positive things either. I just didn't feel anything. And so, um, you know, I, I mean, thankfully. Because you you cared too much, (laughs) right? I worry about people who, uh, women who don't care and, and just wish the baby were not there, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. But go ahead, Key. I'm sorry I interrupted. You. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> I'm I'm rambling. Sorry, but um, yeah. So I just um, you know, then thankfully because I've been you know most of my life have been followed by therapists. Like you know, I I had the I was able to kind of realize okay something's not right here, but I can't help but think you know there's so many women that just don't no. And so they just, you know, so they've never seen a therapist or maybe they've never, you know, talked to someone about this. And so they just, they wouldn't know to research postpartum. They don't even like, you know, they don't know. Cause I mean, it's still, it's 2021, but I feel like we still don't talk about it as much as we should. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's a, a, and especially the angry part. You yeah. don't even realize, at least I didn't, that that's what was going on. Yeah. And it's normal. See, if we just understood that a lot of those feelings are normal, given the social pressure on us to be perfect, it, it's a normal reaction to an abnormal expectation. Yeah. And it, then you start criticizing yourself and buying into it. And pretty soon, you, yes, you're in therapy land. <laughs> um, but yeah. but I, I have a way of talking about it that makes people more comfortable that I just stumbled on. So if you want to talk about it. Oh yeah, of course. I can can stick that in here. I once had a teenager, not long ago actually, who uh, wouldn't do anything. She wouldn't go to school. She wouldn't wash the dishes. She wouldn't do her share in the household. She wouldn't get a job. She wouldn't walk the door. (laughs) You name it, she wouldn't do it. And her parents dragged her in. And I, I fell in love with her right away because I always like the kids who don't behave or who are quirky or, or depressed or whatever. That's why I'm a therapist. So I absolutely loved her. And I 
found myself saying to her, well, look, I know you don't want to be here because you don't want to do anything your parents <laughs> want you to do, but um, I'm not a therapist anymore. I've, I've given up the title. Now I'm just a consultant and I am your private consultant. You hire me. And if you don't like me, you get to fire me. And she loved that. She started telling all her friends that she had a private. <laughs> it was so funny. And it went smoothly from then on. Yeah. It kind of makes me think like, I guess maybe because that kind of gave her control over yes. the situation versus, you know, she felt like she was being controlled by her parents are sending her to you. And then now, you know, she's the one that's hired you. And so it's, it's under her control. I, I get that. Yeah. I totally get yeah. that. Um, I love, I frankly love the concept because it removes me from the power position, mm-hmm. which, which you're articulating right there. Um, and that's very important because those of us who are with the, the newer kind of therapy today, rather than back in the old days, which we called the medical model, where the doctor is supreme and you listen to what usually he says you need to do and what's wrong with you. You're talking to an equal who just struggles through life too, but may have more experience in this area than you do. Mm -hmm. And this kid, for example, was a tremendous artist. I can't, I can't draw to save myself. So she had that talent and we, we just had fun Mm -hmm. together. Yeah. I think that's great because, you know, for me, I know at the beginning when I started realizing, okay, like the way I'm thinking isn't normal. (laughs) This isn't something's wrong here. I was almost scared to go and talk to my doctor because I'm like, they're going to take my kid away, you know, because they're going to think I'm, I'm endangering them or something, which I wasn't, I was just having intrusive thoughts and I didn't want them there. I wasn't trying to make this happen. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I do like how it's changing and it's becoming a little more, I don't know, just one-on-one and personal and, and just, a little more like quote unquote safe. Like you feel like it's a safe space. You can just say the crazy thing and your doctor yeah. isn't going to like, <gasps> what? <Exactly. laughs> They're not going to overreact like you're a parent might or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Someone explained it to, to me in my training. A good therapist is like a benign aunt or uncle. They care about you a lot, but they're not invested in what you decide or how well you function. They just love you. That's it. Mm -hmm. I I think you, you have to have an emotional attachment to the clients you work with. Um, I'm a huge believer in that. So it's it's runs counter to the history of the field but i'm not the only one there are others who have discovered the power of that Mm -hmm. by the way there's there's a famous british psychologist who i should have read more of but he i know he applies here named donald winnicott who talks about um anger in the postpartum period Mm -hmm. and in general at parent about parenting and is very reassuring about it Uh, so i looked i just studied up a little bit for this podcast Mm -hmm. and was very reassured myself that the the notion of being angry is is pretty universal yeah Mm -hmm. um and that, that kind of um brings up something in my mind so i mean it's not so yes, there's the anger that's there, um, but then with the anger comes the shame, and I think shame is even worse because you know you're you're angry and you're feeling angry, but then you're shaming yourself for feeling angry, which is kind of just like a a mind f. <laughs> um, double, then, let's call it a double whammy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and wait, there's another aspect to it. Oh yes. 
if you try to bottle up your anger and don't accept that it just comes with the territory, sometimes, then you bottle up all the positive feelings too. And like you said, you mm -hmm. didn't feel anything for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's the problem with, you know, oh, I, I only love my baby. It's all joy. It, it, it isn't, but there's a lot of joy. Let's talk about that too, mm -hmm. um, which you can feel and experience the thrill of helping to educate the next generation. But it comes with problems and they're annoying. Children can be very annoying. <laughs> Please don't know about yours. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'll be the first one to admit that sometimes kids can just be jerks. Like, I love yeah. you, but you're, you're a jerk right now and you need to knock it off. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's a release of anger in a pretty healthy, in a very healthy way. That's yeah. really good. I'd say that's good parenting. <laughs> you're being a jerk, but you do it in a way that you're kind of with them. Yes. They they know. I hope that you've been you were a jerk when you were a kid too. <laughs> oh oh, I was. I I call my mother and apologize all the time now. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. So that's I'm so nice. I'm like, thank you for not giving me up for adoption. Thank you for loving me despite <laughs> it all. I get it now. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny, like when you know, I remember when I was younger, my mom would say, you know, you'll understand when you're a mom, you'll understand when you're a mom. And, you know, when I'm, when I was younger, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, right. no, I won't. And then now I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> right. I've forgiven my mother too, for a lot of things. I can tell you. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's such a, it's just a crazy thing, you know? And plus, I mean, not even just the after the baby's born, all the, the shift, but during the pregnancy, your emotions are heightened as well. Yeah. And that's a long time. So, I, you know, I, I didn't even think about this, but I was talking to my husband a long time ago and I said, you know, nine months because of fourth trimester, 12 months, that's a whole year of feeling different and feeling, you know, and so it's such a long time that you start to get used to that, to feeling that way. And then you start to think that that's just who you are. And then, you know, and so uh, like, then I start, I'm like, why am I like this? You know, this is insane. Like I'm crazy. Like, you know, right. and I mean, I'm just now starting to, to normalize after having yeah. my second, she's four months old. And so now I'm finally back to oh. like, oh, like, I'm not just like a, I'm not just insane all the time. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. You, you know, the other thing that happens, it just, I remember now is, um, people don't pay attention to you anymore. It's all about the baby. Yeah. And, and we, the mothers need, it, there was a wonderful article in the New York Times Magazine section, which I happily hit on when one of Mike's sons was young. And it said, when mothers need mothering. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember my, I have a, I had a stepsister who was wonderful and she was 20 years older than me. She was joking, but when I brought my first baby to her house, that we lived in different cities in New York and I rang the bell and she came to the door and I said, hi, Sean. And she said, no, 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 you move aside. I want the baby. Yeah. And she was kidding. She was kidding me but it stuck with me forever, yeah. right? I, I could never be mad at her about it because she was, I know she was just being funny, yeah. but she was speaking for the society. You don't count anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, rem I remember feeling that way. And now, um, so when, when one of my friends will have a new baby, I try and bring over a meal, you know, something oh, just yeah. so she didn't have to cook. <laughs> And then I always try to put something in there for mom. Like I know I'll find out what her favorite candy bar is, or I don't know, her favorite treat. I'll, and if there's a sibling, I'll throw something in there for them too, because that can be hard. You know, everyone's oh, yes. on baby, not on me. Um, maybe I should throw something in there for dad. I've never thrown anything in there for dad. I don't know what. <laughs> <But> That's a <laughs> whole other to, podcast. Yeah. Like I try to, you know, do something nice for mom too, because she's going through a lot, you know? like throwing her favorite chocolates or someone wants, they just brought me a coffee and I just, 
I wasn't expecting it. They just popped over. They're like, here's a coffee and a muffin. Bye. And I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> like it just it really meant a lot to me. No, absolutely. I, it's mostly about us, right? If somebody said, what's your best piece of advice for a new mother? It's be, be nice to yourself first because then you're, you'll be happier and your kid will be okay, right? There was a mm -hmm. book back in the day, I'm okay, you're okay. So if we're okay, because we're not blaming ourselves for this and that, um, our kids will be okay. Yeah. Makes sense, right? Doesn't it somewhere? It's yeah. so hard to apply. But it, uh, right? I think that's great, yeah. Because I, I work with a lot of kids. So I say that a lot. It's like, if you don't see me freaking out, you don't need to freak out. It's all good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's okay. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and sometimes I am freaking out, but I'm freaking out on the inside. <laughs> so like everything's fine. And then they leave them like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> now I can have a panic attack. Exactly. Now you're gone. Exactly. But, exactly. But I think, I think this is a great transition point. We'll take a quick commercial break and we're going to come right back in and we're going to talk about our children's mental health. The Imperfect Moms Club is brought to you by... Oh, look at that, huh? So they just magically showed up. I mean, literally, I just opened the door and they were there. I ordered them, honey. Oh! We are very happy with our new Casper. The comfort is like a Lucius cloud, one of the softer clouds. But it's also a firm cloud, like a Aratio cloud. Always want to be a weatherman. Guess who I am? It's the most exciting thing that's happened in our bedroom in a long time long time right i was on the fence about changing from a manual to an electric toothbrush but my hygienist said going electric could lead to way cleaner teeth she said get the one inspired by dentists with the round brush head go pro with oral b oral b's gentle rounded brush head removes more plaque along the gum line for cleaner teeth and healthier gums and unlike sonicare oral b is the first electric toothbrush brand accepted by the ada for its effectiveness and safety what an amazing clean I'll only use an Oral-B. Oral-B. Brush like a pro. This is the Imperfect Moms Club on PEN. Get in touch with the show through the PEN listener hotline at 833-PODSNET. That's 833-763-7638. And now, back to the Imperfect Moms Club on the Podcast Entertainment Network. All right, well, welcome back from the break. This is an awesome conversation. I'm loving every minute of this. So now we're going to talk about our children's mental health at home, early signs of potential issues, things we can do to help, you know, all that good stuff. If your child, and I'm assuming now we're talking about school age kids, maybe age three to uh, through high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, trouble sleeping, a, a lot of trouble, not occasional these are all the most normal kid in the world could have one or two experiences like what I'm going to list out. Mm -hmm. um, so it's only when it becomes pretty extreme. Mm -hmm. So trouble sleeping, not eating, great difficulty concentrating on anything, um, no play dates or doesn't want them, nobody wants to play with me. Um, a big sudden change in behavior. A kid who's very active suddenly is withdrawn and just sits around. Um, sudden changes at home, um, such as parents or grandparents' illness or even a death can happen and the school may not even know about it. Um, or you don't count it because, gee, kid, the kid didn't seem to like grandma that much, but why is she so upset? Um, so you also want to make sure that your child, let's say it's your child, isn't getting bullied or abused at home by someone in the household and you're unaware of it, or by a sibling or by a neighbor. You know, this gets us into pretty serious territory. Um, and make sure that the academic and behavior expectations by the school are reasonable. Because mm -hmm. guess what? I have a thing about this because I did a lot of um, supervision of student teachers. 
there are mean teachers, there are mm -hmm. unreasonable teachers, and there are teachers who bully kids. And you don't want to be blaming your kid for their bad behavior or sudden change in behavior if it's really the school. Yeah. And oh boy, do I have a story about that. <laughs> there was a father when I was training student teachers who I heard about, I didn't know him myself, but a colleague told me the story of a parent in the school where she was supervising, went to the principal and said, my kindergarten uh, child is not happy in so-and-so's classroom and I want my child to be switched. And the principal said, we don't switch children from class to class. The child just has to learn to adapt. And it went on and on and on like that. And the father said, okay, I will try to help him do that. Went home, a couple of weeks later, came back, the principal said the same thing. And the father said, listen, you change my, ki my kid's class or you'll never forget what I'm going to do to you. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> he threatened him. And the next day, the kid was in a new classroom. I mean, now that's an extreme thing that that parent was willing to do. But I say now, after thinking about it for many, many years, that that parent, maybe there was another way, but that parent understood his job was to defend his kid in mm -hmm. that case. But now let's take the situation of a kid who is doing the abusing or the bad behavior or whatever. And I have to tell you a story about my older son, which I hadn't thought about for years. So thank you very much. Okay, so my older son, he'd kill me if he knew I was doing this, but I won't tell you his name. So <laughs> he, we were, I, I forget where we were, but maybe in the playground. And he bit another kid. Okay, now that is, a bad, that's bad behavior. And instead of blowing up at him, I had the presence of mind, luckily, to say, what made you do that? And he said, well, Sarah bit me. So I thought it would be okay to bite my friend Josh. <laughs> To me, I'm sorry, I, I still think it's hilarious, right? <laughs> it, but in that case, love happily, when I explained to him that that's not the greatest way to settle a dispute or an argument with a friend, there are other ways to do it. He, he hasn't bitten anyone <laughs> since, mm -hmm. I don't think. <laughs> and he's well over 40 now. So... There was a case where it was a concerning behavior, but it didn't amount to anything, right? right? Other things he did, I was not so happy with. But this was just, you know, a crazy three-year-old's, you know, learning. Mm -hmm. um, so there was that. And then, I, and I'll try to sum it up, there was another kid in that nursery school class when I observed just as a parent, he, this other kid was just standing there looking around, but mostly looking at a record player going around and around in circles and stood there, wasn't talking to anybody, wasn't doing anything, just staring at the record player. And I, I guess I was concerned because I've remembered it to this day. Well, guess what? Danny was his name. Uh, like his father, is a world-renowned mathematician, taught at Harvard, Yale. He's made the wow. circuit of the Ivy League. Now, he might have been on the spectrum somewhere, not very mild, I would guess, but so what? You know, I, I don't know that I would have rushed him off to a therapist. I I, I could call his mother. I still occasionally speak to her and see, see what happens, what happened in that way with for him. But not everything that's unusual is a catastrophe, right. is, is what, what I, the point I want to make. And 
before you freak out about something your child is doing, ask them, what, what made you do that? How is it that you came to bite your best friend? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 And I think it's good that you say that just because there's a little something, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Because I can definitely go off the deep end and think, oh, she's dyslexic. She's never going to learn to read. She's going to live with me forever. We're going to be on welfare. And it's just, yeah, you go on, you go catastrophizing is the the wonderful word for it. Um, This woman that I've been working with who's so comp, she's too competent. So she takes on everything that the three of us could take on and then wonders why she's upset, right? And, mm-hmm. and having migraines and whatever else. She has some symptoms that, that come on. And she finally understands that it's not the end of the world. And she had some symptoms that were very upsetting, like do I have a brain tumor? Do I have, am I going blind? What, what's the matter with me? Mm-hmm. And someone had once said to me, just because you have extreme symptoms doesn't mean, you're going, doesn't mean that you're seriously ill. Mm-hmm. The symptoms can be bad, but the disease can be, you're just uh, overloaded, mm-hmm. which is, was the truth for her. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah and I think, Sometimes with kids, different situations that happen in their, in their life, like it does affect them physically. Like I can tell when I'm really, really yeah. stressed because I get really bad headaches, you know, I'll get, I'll be nauseous or whatever. And it would just be really foolish to think that if our kids aren't stressed out, that they're not going to feel well either, you know, mm-hmm. and they're not going to start lashing out or acting weird or acting a certain way because the stress on their bodies it must be more than on a on an adult body because sometimes they have to deal with very big feelings. That's been such a good point, and I'm glad you brought it up because I for, forgot to put it on my list. That if your child is if your child is having physical symptoms um, that don't seem to go away, you want to check it out with their doctor. But also, it can be psychological. I noticed when I was supervising student teachers that all the second graders seem to have stomach aches. Now, I don't know why or what new, you know, challenge was on their plate, uh, but something. Mm -hmm. It was different teachers, so it wasn't the teacher. Um, Second grade in that particular school was very boring. They had to memorize and practically memorized the dictionary. It was a ridiculous curriculum, Mm -hmm. but I don't think that was what caused it. There was an anxiety that cropped up when they were about seven. So that's Mm -hmm. always been interesting to me. Um, Mm -hmm. The other thing you can look for is what the school says, right? Because a lot of times it is true that they pick up things that a parent won't. so I think you can use that as a guide with the caveat that, hello, it could be the teacher, mm-hmm. right? but not necessarily at all. Okay. Right. This brings up, so um, I guess going back to the, like the biting and then asking, you know, the, the child why they did yeah. that. Um, so I, enough. I can't help it. I was, I was a biter when I was a kid. Um, So my, (laughs) so my mom would get calls from my school, like, oh, she bit another kid today. So I just like, if somebody took my toy or took something that I was playing with, I would just bite them, Um, (laughs) which I think is, I mean, it, it's, you see me laughing, right? I don't, it's just funny to me. Like, where did you get that idea? I'm very curious. Let's Yeah. I mean, but it's, it's, I, I feel like, so that it kind of brings up the, you know, kids, they're not, I see, I see kids as very pure, you know, and they, you know, kids aren't born evil. They're not born to do harm. They're not born, you know? And so, so I think that like that idea of asking them why they did something and having them explain in their own words might be better than just, you know, saying like, oh, that's bad or whatever, you yeah, know, like, I wonder if like had, cause I, I think I did this 
probably several times it probably lasted you know because they kept calling my mom they were like okay for real <laughs> like your kid like I don't understand because I mean the funny thing about that is I would bet I would bite boys in the butt because I guess <laughs> you know, part of them I don't know anyway probably, I'm sure they deserved it <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so and then like it kind of progressed to like I remember I had you know I had like this really huge life-size teddy bear and I was trying to get it to sit still and it kept leaning forward and then I bit the teddy bear because it wasn't <laughs> listening to me when I was telling it to just sit there you know because um teddy bears were alive in my brain um and then I remember I bit a bouncy ball because it kept bouncing away from me <laughs> so I mean I feel like kid you know I mean like I feel like maybe people were just telling me like no don't do that don't do that instead of explaining to me why that wasn't well, helpful. why yeah why? yeah and so had I feel like had somebody explained to me okay this isn't the best way to handle whatever I would have it would have been been easier and I probably would have stopped doing it earlier than I did um I feel like kids you know a lot of times we forget I feel like a lot of people forget that, you know, kids, they're, they're, they're little and they're not, they don't have all the development that we have, you know? And so, um, when I see, you know, parents will like yell at their kids or something like, yeah, sometimes a kid, okay. Sometimes, you know, you yell at your kid, whatever, but I feel like it might be better to explain things to them and kind of make it into like, turn it into like a teaching moment versus, a you're behaving badly. Absolutely. You know? I, I, you're speaking my language. <laughs> and it's, all of this has me, it's fascinating to me. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm like amped right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is why you do this. I think you're very lucky to have this, have thought up this podcast. It was so needed. Um, I, I can't tell you, I wish that you had been doing it when I was a, a young mother. Mm -hmm. It's just a beautiful thing. Yeah, I think half the time it's just knowing that you're not alone. Cause like exactly. I'm thinking, am I a crazy person? I'm the only one yep. dealing with this. So just knowing there's other people out there who also deal with it, you're like, oh, okay, I'm not crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it helps so much to know that yes. you're not the only one out there. You have there's like a community of us. When when my older son was very young, um, we had a mother's group. That was the best we could do for each other. And we would hang out. One of us was a nursery school teacher. And I'm telling you, we just lapped up everything she could teach us. And one thing happened that was fascinating. You know about separation anxiety for mm -hmm. a kid, right? If your kid uh, won't go to school, that, I could have put that on the list, right? Parents get so upset and the, the, the next thing they're on the phone scheduling an appointment with a therapist you know what she did her daughter had said wouldn't go to didn't want to go to school and would scream and cry she had her husband take the kid to school mm -hmm. like that wow. yeah it wasn't the same wrench it yeah was not, I, it just rachel went to school and she's now <laughs> If you're listening, Rachel, Rachel is a tax attorney in California. Wow. Doing fine. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> right. All these people grow up and they're they're good as long mm -hmm. as we don't freak out about every little thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think I definitely um, you know, it's it's interesting because I, you know, because before I became a mom, obviously I didn't think about all of this, but now that um now that I'm a mom, plus I've managed my depression. Um, I'm on medication. I recently found out that I actually have ADHD. And so I started medication for that. And I just feel so clear minded for the first time ever. Wonderful. So now I'm thinking about all these things about like, how can I, you know, and I'm, I'm really, I'm really into the whole kind of letting your kid kind of learn on their own and like not really making it so strict and structured and you know I mean kids you know like I said they're naturally you know they're not born evil they're not you know I mean if anything giving them too much structure and too much being too strict might you know might be there, helpful to them there are studies that support what you're saying a hundred percent there was a famous study done at Harvard 
um, in which mothers were classified as either A mothers, B mothers, or C mothers. I forget what B mothers were, but A mothers were very structured. If the kid, um, every uh, every hour was accounted for, every the child had to play with this or that. There are the parents who put words on all the objects around the house, like mm -hmm. refrigerator on the refrigerator. I had one kid who was brought in because he hated hated, hated school because his parents had tortured him to learn before he even went. Right. So it, it, see mothers are what you're talking about, um, Lisa, that um, the kid, kids were allowed to play on their own. And when they had a problem or a question, they would come around. And that was the moment, the teachable moment where the mom could say, well, hmm, did you try this? Or how about that? Mm -hmm. um, and another great secret, you want to get your kid to clean up their room? Don't yell at them. Mm -hmm. Do, <laughs> which I did. Don't do what I did. <laughs> um, help them do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And make it a fun thing. Yeah. Or, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask Lily, hey, do you want to help mommy clean up the blocks? And she'll, she sings a song and she goes, clean up, clean, you know, and she, okay, she's you got it. And she, yeah, it's, yeah, it, I, it's so like, I love seeing her development and how she's growing up and learning things. And, you know, and I just, I don't want to squash that. And plus I am. So I don't know. I just, you know, cause then later in life, as the kid grows up, they kind of are, um, they expect perfection from themselves because you know they were kind of brought up that way and so later in life they might be right. really stressed out or depressed I mean I remember in um I was in high school um when I lived in in Boston and um this uh I remember the student committed suicide I didn't know her but um she just couldn't handle the pressure and it was too much anxiety and stress and you know so now thinking about that today I'm like oh my god like I would never want to put my my children through that much stress. It's just not necessary. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I, so this might, so I, I had, I had cancer in high school. I just recently did an episode about that. Um, wow. And I feel like that kind of taught me to not sweat the small stuff or, you know, and so I kind of learned that early because of the cancer, but I mean, I, I feel like I, I'm kind of, that's kind of taught me to parent my children kind of that same way you know like not everything you don't have to get A's all the time not everything's a test it's okay to, to just experience life and have fun and you know I mean you know and the, she's learned Lily is so smart and she's learned most of it on her own I mean you know it's I always don't well maybe we have to broadcast this because I do believe it sometimes I think or often I think that school is vastly overrated <laughs> That's oh yeah and i okay i'm a school teacher and sometimes <laughs> i teach kindergarten but everyone knows my classroom is open to everybody so sometimes these high school girls will come down and they're like miss Brittany, blah 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 and i'm like guys you're only you're here for four years it doesn't matter like it, it, so say let's just say everyone hates you they don't hate you but let's just say that let's say they everyone do. hates you you're out of here in what two years or whatever you're going to go live your life. You, you, you can move anywhere you want. You're an adult. <laughs> like, I love it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You can make mistakes too along the way yeah. that you can fix. Um, yeah. So one thing that was said to me that I found very helpful, maybe it's a good closer in some ways, um, although we didn't get to talk about COVID. I know you wanted to. <laughs> um, do we have more time or no? Oh, we have unlimited time. So just, yeah, we, okay. can, we can talk as I, long as you guys want. <laughs> I wanted to stick in what a wonderful therapist colleague said to me when I was very upset about my younger son, because I have two kids, both over 40. My older one sailed through. It's a typical story in some ways. And, my, and loved school. He hated vacation. And I thought that was really strange. I should have taken him to a therapist for that. Anyway, he, he's been very successful in the traditional ways. <clears throat> My younger son 
just as smart, um, if not smarter, uh, by my older son's admission. Mm. Um, hated school, didn't want to go, and refused to go, and didn't go after he was close to 16. That was it. He was, no more school. Mm -hmm. And he did everything he wasn't supposed to do. I won't even bother you with the details. And I talked to my friend, <clears throat> Aaron, who was a wonderful therapist, and also had started as a reading specialist. You might be interested in that. Anyhow, he said to me, um, I said, I'm, I, what did I do wrong? You know, I, I tried so much, I, I did so much similar, and they are totally different people, but I'm still the same mother. What did I do? And he said, no, you, what you have to realize is if he didn't have you, it would be even worse. He'd be sleeping under a bridge somewhere. That was one thing he said to make me feel better. <laughs> and the other was, whatever you do, don't ruin your relationship with him over anything. And he died a whole bunch of years ago, this wonderful therapist, wonderful mm -hmm. man. And I have followed that like a mantra. Mm -hmm. I adore my younger son. We are close. It's not perfect. He tells me what's wrong with me all the time. But he's talking. He's talking to me. I listen to him. He makes me climb mountains, which I hate. <laughs> we have fun. Oh. So I want to show you something because I'm having so much fun. Uh. Okay. And this is a good segue, actually. Into it's a puppy. This. It's a puppy. This is Jakey, which is my younger son's puppy from when oh. he was a little boy. And he left him with me for safekeeping. So oh, that's so <laughs> precious. And you know what's funny? Clients come in and very often they'll play with him or you know, what whatever. It's great play therapy. Oh. So that's that. We're gonna take another short break. Go refill yes. your coffee. We're gonna be right back and we're gonna talk about the pandemic and how it's affected our kids, but we'll keep it lighthearted. So oh. And now, a word from our sponsors. Imagine a world where potty training is fun, fast, and easy. Only pull-ups have Disney graphics that fade when wet to teach big kids to stay dry. So they're motivated to keep the music going. I'm a big kid now. Chris, come and turn the TV, turn your house into us. Nice and cold, but the sensitive teeth thing is getting old. Yeah. Time to say Bye. goodbye to the pain, because having sensitive teeth, teeth is just so lame. Press gum and sensitivity turns your house into ah. Hey! 80% of sensitivity starts at the gum line. Treat it at the source with Crest Gum and Sensitivity. Crest, healthy, beautiful smiles for life. No matter what all the baby experts say, the perfect way to care for your baby is your own way. And that inspired our perfect diaper to be the softest ever with plant-based materials. Huggy Special Delivery. Enjoying this show? Be sure to check out all the shows across the Podcast Entertainment Network, where there's a show for every interest. Visit www.podcastentertainment.com to browse through the full collection of shows. And now, back to the Imperfect Moms Club on the Podcast Entertainment Network. Let's jump right back into it. This is our last segment. I'm kind of sad because I really like talking to you and I don't want this to end. You know, yeah, like, you. I mean, seriously, like, could you like adopt me, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to put my own kids up for adoption first, but I'll let you know. <laughs> Um, I would love to. I'm having such a great time. <laughs> Good. This is so great. We, we'll have to have her. We, we need to have her back, Lisa. Her yes. Back. Yes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. All right. Segue along or transition along. All right. So we're going to start talking about the COVID era, how it's affected our kids, you know, all okay. of that fun stuff. That's I really so don't. Weird. There's no way to make COVID fun. <laughs> Yes, I did. I <laughs> did it. I did it. <laughs> oh my God, I need to know. I need to know. Well, I, I, I did a book. 
Um, well, I have to set the scene, right? Okay. Um, I'm talking to my friend from fourth grade named Maxine, and we're talking on the phone because it's right in the middle of COVID and the vaccines have just come out for seniors. Mm -hmm. So we're saying, oh boy, when, when are we going to get ours, all that. And then all of a sudden it occurred to me, Maxine, vaccine. I said, oh my God, Maxine, your name rhymes with, with vaccine. You have to write a book called Maxine gets her vaccine. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, I don't write books, Alina, you do it. And I said, well, do it with me. No, I'm not going to do it, but you do it. So I said, okay, Maxine. So I did it. And I'll show you the book. Oh my yes. God. I thought you might have known already, but let me see. See, here it is. Oh, I already um, love it. I only saw I only saw the back of it, and I already love it. Oh, yeah. look at that! That's the front. I had a wonderful, wonderful illustrator. I have to promote her too. But oh, here's God. here's Maxine vowing that she will never, 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 never get a va her vaccine shot. <laughs> I've got to look this up. She, it's on Amazon. Oh my God, she, I'm gonna buy it. Right. She is, I, I have to, it's so weird because I, I thought of her, you know, and worked with the illustrator very closely. I loved her, you know, paintbrush braids and stuff. <sighs> And I love her because she, she doesn't second guess herself. She doesn't care what other people think. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. And I wish, I mean, you probably can tell I have some pretty strong opinions, but I'm, I then second guess myself. And I have since I was six, which mm -hmm. is her age. So I would say what I thought and then get very upset that I hurt someone's feelings, that I said the wrong thing, that I was, that was my That's my biggest problem too. Yes, she doesn't do that. She just says what she thinks and that's it. Wow. And she's vowed to her parents that she is never getting that shot, mm -hmm. but she does get it. And who convinces her? I'll give you a hint. Most people, I make them buy the book. Uh -huh. <gasps> I know the answer. Jakey, uh -huh. Jakey, save uh -huh. the day. Oh, that's know? so cute. He got his puppy booster shot. And uh -huh. he reminds her that, uh -huh. that he's fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. She said, Jakey, if you come with me, I will, I will get my shot. That's Aww. so cute. So you got to make it fun for the kids. I, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't think she thought it was fun, but, but, but she didn't think it was horrible. And it goes through, I realize all the things that kids go through. She, he, he won't play with her the way he's supposed to, and she doesn't have her friends. So that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, first he has to get his shot and she gets very upset. And then she tries to get convince her parents that Jakey shouldn't get his booster shot, but no, she doesn't win that one. Uh -huh. And then, um, yeah, she takes him. I, I love the book because the illustrations are so great. You can't really see, but um, what can I show you? Oh yeah. They, they have to wash their hands and uh -huh. paws for- Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> he's very... Oh my God, she blows me away though. And here she is in school and he wants to play, mm -hmm. right? So she has to do remote schooling, which is weird. And it goes on and on and on. Mm. And let me see. And then she has, oh, and then her best friend who was, is my best friend still from birth, wow. um, tells her that the vaccine doesn't make you well, it makes you sick. Oh. Well, so we have a problem. So mm -hmm. they have to go to the doctor, who is my friend Gary, and he's in the book 
doctor. This part I love because at the end she plays doctor and teaches her friend Francie that the vaccine is okay because Dr. Gary says so. Oh, just got a little hat. Anyway, I wanted to talk about the. So yeah, COVID, the virus, you know, but I wanted to talk about the effects of children, the effects of like quarantine and, you know, having to change the way they do things. So when we first went into quarantine, it was just really weird. I think everyone was just like, what is going on? Exactly. How old are your kids? Let me just. So my Clara is six and Molly just turned four. So your six-year-old, I hope, loves this book. I hope you get it for her. Yeah, she she would love that. And I can tell her I spoke with the author. So (laughs) mom is pretty cool. But yeah, it was just weird. And I remember, you know, like everyone stayed inside. We didn't go to stores or anything. And I remember even my husband, who's like the least social person ever, who hates going on errands, is like, I just want to go to Walmart. I'm like, whoa, are you okay, man? <laughs> That's you desperation, know. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, that, like we tried to like, you know, we, we still tried to do school and we, I mean, it was hard because like we couldn't do birthday parties. We couldn't like have grandma come visit in the summer like we used to, like Christmas was different. It was just different, but we still tried to make it as fun as possible and not let on to the kids that maybe I was freaking out or maybe Mike was freaking out you know because we're also trying to like run the school and we're like what the heck are we supposed to do like how do we keep the school year going how do we get these kids to graduate and all that so just trying to keep it as normal as possible for them as far as like home life you know we, we tried that but you know, and then having them to wear their masks their first day, they were such troopers. When we took them out for the first time wearing masks, like I thought, oh, this is going to be a nightmare. They're going to rip them off. They're not going to want to wear them. But I let them pick out their own fabric and it had like princesses great. on it. Great idea. Yeah. So like one of them got like Cinderella. The other one got Beauty and the Beast. And they thought that was cool. You know, and now they're obsessed with hand sanitizer. Like they <laughs> love their hand sanitizer. I'm like, you're going to dry your skin out. Like stop. <laughs> like, just stop. <laughs> But I mean, it broke my heart as a mom, I think more than theirs because yeah, grandma couldn't come for Christmas. We couldn't have a big birthday party. Um, No, we can't go out to Susan's house or whatever. So it was hard. It's hard. It's still hard now, even though we're kind of getting out of it. I don't know. Every time we seem like we're turning a corner, we're not really turning a corner. I know. (laughs) I'm just as confused as everybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I get a booster? Don't I get a booster? What's, but like so many things, but particularly with this, they, I think it's okay to tell kids that you're scared if you are, right? But you want to have your scaredness under some control when you tell them. Right. And, and just say, look, we'll get through this together as best we can, we're doing the best we can. Mm -hmm. And that's all a person can do. It's about accepting that this is a crazy situation Mm -hmm. that nobody knows totally how to handle. And even grownups don't know how to do it perfectly. But I I think the truth helps a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to emphasize how many people are dying, all the statistics, but Yes, if, if the people who are not careful are having problems, but we're yeah. being careful, you know, the, whatever you think, you know, the, the language to use. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So we had to, all four of us in our family, we had to all get a COVID test yesterday because um, we were exposed and all that. And my, my youngest daughter already had a test, so she was fine with it because after the test, I went and I got her hash brown from McDonald's. So she was like, yes, we're getting Absolutely. McDonald's after. <laughs> she was excited. But my other one was a little more nervous. She tends yeah. to be, I don't want to say dramatic because that's not quite the word, but she just kind of like, all of her feelings are right here for you to feel. And it's either the best day of my life or it's the worst day of my life. Like, there's not a lot of middle. And she was kind of freaking out about this test. And I'm like, listen, mommy and daddy are going to do it too. It's just a quick little thing up your nose like you pick your nose right. all the time like come on and then um I, tr- I tried to get him to laugh during the thing which I think helped I was like listen yeah. pulls the q-tip and she swabs your nose if she gets a booger I'll give you a dollar and they thought that was the funniest <laughs> thing 
because I've had friends who had to get theirs done and they're like, yeah, they, they pull out a massive booger when they pull the Q-tip out. I was like, okay, cool. If you get a booger, you get a dollar. And then I was like, thank you so much. That makes my job so much easier. So no one got a, no one got any dollars yesterday, oh. but, but it made it a little easier. And did they come, do you have the test results? You we know? have three out of four, three out of four of us are fine. The last one, we don't know yet. I don't know why they haven't told me okay. again. I'm trying not to freak out. Right, like, right. No freaking out. You know, so I'm just waiting on that last one. I mean, like she's my six-year-old. I can't make her stay in her room. So like, we're just, no, no. we're together. You <laughs> like, know what her wearing her feelings on her sleeve I think is typical of that age. Mm -hmm. That's that's this. I I made her six years old, and I'm so removed from that. I had no daughters either, and I barely remember being six. But it it does seem to be the time where they have a, a tremendous emotions and not much of a way of of controlling them. So, but for me, I, I think it's glorious that, that say this kid, Maxine and your daughter have, um, uh, I, I'll call them tantrums or freakouts, meltdowns, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. That, that means they're, they're able to feel their feelings and, I, you know, yeah. gradually moderate it over time, but don't freak out. You know, if you, if you then have a tantrum, it's not such a great idea. Mm -hmm. Although, I don't know, you can try it. <laughs> <laughs> Lily's only two, so she, she has these big emotions and then she, you know, she doesn't have any, um, any tools or any ways to cope Anything. with them. Right. Nothing. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So I could tell you the coffee yogurt story. You want to hear that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, my older son who bit his friend, he, he wanted um, coffee yogurt and we were sitting in the backyard and at that time, there was, I think, one brand. There were two brands. Dan Dannon coffee yogurt was the yogurt of the day, mm -hmm. and he had to have it. And it was about 8 o'clock, and the supermarket in the small town we were living in was closed, and I knew it. And he insisted that he had to have it. And I said, well, I, we just don't have it. I can't, I can't make it happen. And he insisted he had to have it. And I said, you can have vanilla, we have that. No, I want coffee. And we were, it, the, the moon was just coming up at night and it was beautiful outside and I was having fun with him. And I said, you know what? I want the moon and I want you to get it for me. I don't know. <laughs> And he looked all upset and he said, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I can't get you coffee yogurt either. I could, but I can't. I don't know if he remembers that. I should ask him. That's, a, such That's a, such I, a sweet story. Isn't it? It's such a, just a moment. Listen, I had horrible moments too that I'm totally not proud of, and you should hear that also, but we shouldn't end on that note, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I, yeah. I can tell you one, one that stays in my mind forever with my younger son. Um, I was chasing him around a big round table we had when he was maybe, I don't know, seven, eight, and I don't know what I was so angry at him about. And I thought to my, if I catch up with him, I'm going to kill him. It, it, it was a thought and my mother used to say that I'm going to kill you kids so it wasn't anything that I knew I would do but I was so heated up and so out of control myself it was insane mm -hmm. so I stopped myself because I heard that thought you know mm -hmm. and I, I realized I, I wasn't planning to actually kill him and I apologized it was all I could do yeah I'm really sorry I is as much of a jerk as you were being <laughs> yeah I do that with my kids like you know what I do lose my cool I'm not a yeah. perfect mom I lose yeah. my cool and you know what I it was like a couple weeks ago because I was I call it flying solo because my husband was gone for a few days so I was uh -huh. doing it by myself flying solo and I was just so frustrated and I, like just put your shoe on it is not that hard right <laughs> right and she just, just wouldn't do it 
Yeah. Really? So I just said, I just said shoes like really loud at her. Cause I'm like, this is like the 20th time I've asked you to put your yeah. shoes on. Yeah. She started to cry. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, nope. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> That was bad because I knew she misses daddy too. She's tired too. And that was not cool of me. So no. And so then she got her shoe on and I had her come over. I gave her a hug and I said, mommy is so sorry. I should not have yelled at you. I hurt your feelings and I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? And the kids always forgive so quick and it just like kills well, me even more. So I'm like, oh, I don't deserve it. <laughs> you. That's because you ha- are both your kids girls. Oh yeah. They're, they're both yeah. glitter yeah, but- and princesses everywhere. Okay. So my younger, that same younger son, I once apologized to him for something or other. And he said, no, mom, no more chances. Oh, no. God. I, I mean. That's great. It's so funny. That's what I just love. When I look back on all the child rearing years, I miss it because it was so much fun in between the the terrible stuff you know mm-hmm. that went mm-hmm. on to be good to yourself if you possibly can and if you can't hire a consultant <laughs> to help you do it it'll okay. make you feel stronger and better and it can even be fun you could even laugh right people have said to me when they hear my, what goes on in my office they said well why are people laughing i said because life is funny sometimes it just is yeah. and um and whatever you do don't ruin your relationship with your kids mm-hmm. right which means you you may be a pushover sometimes and it's i okay. definitely am yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> how yeah. can people listening find you and like find your book okay. and just all right. Because they need to. I'm going to tell them, like, look this, look up this person right now. So, <laughs> okay. Um, it's E L E L B, my initials. Um, there are E L B therapy.com and then slash books if they want to get the Maxine book. If they want to just look at the website, um, they don't need to put slash books. <laughs> right? Right. But yeah. That's- that's basically it. Awesome. Well, um, I'm definitely buying that book. I don't know about you, Brittany. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I need that. Want to get in touch with the show? Email us at imperfect at podcastentertainment.com. Thank you for listening to today's episode of the Imperfect Moms Club.